Hi there everyone. I uh, just wanted to go over how to install the Ballystern OS and what this is is basically you can run the pinball machine with an Arduino Nano. Some brilliant people I guess out there have uh, recoded the games. These classic Ballysterns given them kind of a new life and I thought this was such a cool project that I wanted to do it for my Meteor. And just wanted to go through the steps. Hopefully it will help other people that might have questions on it. But to start with, I'm just right here at ballysternos.github.io. And I'm just going to kind of walk through the steps and show what I did to get my Arduino basically talking with the pinball machine. And first thing is build the hardware. If you click on this, uh, the guide here tells you how to build it. I actually <laughs> took the easy way and I ordered a kit. Roy G. Bev makes a kit that um, helps with this and what I should have done is probably waited. He's redoing a revision too and this allows um, the SB300 for Meteor to work with uh, Andrino Nano. But what I'm going to do ultimately is I'm going to get the uh, wave board and just use that so this isn't a big concern but if you want to use meteor uh, make sure you get the revision 2 board because that will support the sb300 sound card but i just put together the kit here i'll show you what i did here in a second i want to start with the hardware on this and i ordered a kit actually uh, roy g bev sells a kit with a printed circuit board and that might be a little bit easier than trying to hand wire this I'll put a link in the description for that. Also, I did buy a Arduino Nano and I just got a cheap one off of eBay. And what I'm gonna do is solder this together and that should be the hardware section of this. If I come across any problems or anything, I'll let you know. But I think the kit is the way to go for this and I'll be back after I get this done. I'm back, here is the finished product. Um, pretty easy to put together. I think it took maybe 20 minutes. Is that pretty easy to install? And now I think I'm ready for the next step. So pretty nice kit. Thank you, Roy G. Bev. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to download the Arduino software. That way I have a spot where I can put all these files from the librarian software. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to head on over to arduino.cc slash en slash software. And since I'm using a Windows 7 and newer, I'm going to click here and download. Since this is all open source, feel free to donate since I've already downloaded it. I'm just going to hit download right here. And a little bit of time and this will download. Once this has downloaded, I'm just going to follow all the defaults here to install it. Now that Arduino has downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder in that Arduino folder. So right here, Arduino, and just right click, and I'm going to make a new one. And I'm going to call this Meteor 2021. And now I have a spot where I can bring these files in and save them. So move that off to the side. Now I'm ready to go back and get the library. And if you follow the directions, it just says go to this link here. Click on the green code button, hit the download zip. And I don't know if this is the best method, but what I do is I just open this up. I'm going to open this and just highlight everything, which is control A and cut it, which is control X. And then I'm going to bring back this window I just had and put all this into the Meteor 2021 folder. And I'm going to do a similar process here with the next step. If I go back to here and get the software, it says I can get it right here. And I'm going to use the Meteor 2021 folder. That's what I want. So I'm going to click on that. Kind of the same steps, I'm just going to hit the code, download zip, 
Control A, Control X to cut this, and I want to bring it back into the Meteor folder right here. Control V to paste. I'm going to replace files in the destination. And this basically creates everything I need for the Arduino. So next thing I need to do is go ahead, set up the Arduino. I can go back here and I can start setting up the Arduino. So give me a second here and I'll switch screens. Before I open up the Arduino, I'm going to check my device manager. So I come down here to the question mark, type in device manager, and it pops up here. And I can go ahead, open it up. And if I come to ports here, it's going to tell me what port the Arduino's in. And for me, it's a COM6. When I first did this, I had kind of an exclamation point saying something didn't work. And what I had to do is download the CH340 driver. And I'll put this in a link. And this is what I used, and I don't advertise it or anything, but it worked fine for me. So if you can find something better, uh, feel free to use it. But I used this right here and installed it. Once I did that, it worked. So once I come back to Device Manager again, it's um, the Ports COM6. I'm going to open up the Arduino here. And if you go File, Examples, and then Basic, these are all the different programs you can run. There is a Blink one that I'm just going to open up and use here. And one thing I just like to change is this code down here basically saying turn on the light for 1,000 milliseconds or one second. I'm just going to change the 1,000 to 5,000. And what this is going to do is the light's going to stay on for five seconds, and then it's going to turn off for one second. And you really don't have to do this. I just like to make sure whatever I type in here is getting sent over. Before I can upload, I need to check a couple things. Uh, first thing here is I need the Arduino Nano selected. The processor, for me, I had to use the old bootloader, and that worked for me. And then the last thing you have to do is this COM6, and this is why I went to the device manager. So I can select COM6, and if you look in the bottom right down here, it tells you everything that's going. And what I'm going to do is upload this and see if it's going to talk to my Arduino. Hit the upload arrow, and there's an RX and TX light that should light up and tell that the file's uh, being transferred over. And looks like it is. And if I look at that bottom light, that L, that's the blink test. So it's on for five seconds. There just went off for one. And now it's going to be on for five more seconds. So it looks like everything's talking to each other. So now I can go ahead and bring in the Meteor 2021 file. So it brings up the Arduino. It's right here. It's the Meteor 2021 file right here. Click on that, that's going to open up. Uh, one thing, just double check down here, everything looks correct. And now I'm going to upload this to my Arduino. Uh, this takes a little bit of time, it's a pretty large file, but it looks like it's going fine. My RX light is flashing away along with the TX, just means it's receiving and transmitting. Everything is done, and if I go back to the Arduino here, notice the L light that was blinking is no longer blinking, and everything looks good here, so the code is uploaded, and I'm going to go ahead and move this on to the game now. Before I install the Arduino into the pinball machine, I did end up getting the wave trigger, so I'll go over the installation of the firmware on this. Uh, what you need is a FTDI to USB connector. The way I wired this up is it's just one to one. So this top green wire goes to the top green here. Uh, third one, that's what I kind of used to line it up. This was the VCC or plus five, and that's in the third position. And one thing I noticed is one of them says TX, and then the other one says RX, and that's fine. Again, it's just in the same order as these and hopefully that will help you wire it up. Other thing to mention, there is a jumper here that I soldered together. 
And what this does is this allows the 5 volt to come through here, so I don't need the external power supply. Um, I did program this first with an external power supply, and then came back later and added this solder bridge here. But I'm going to do it again with the solder bridge and see if it works here. But uh, this is my setup. Also have a 2 gigabyte micro SD card for the files. And then I'll go ahead and plug in the USB port to the FTDI here and go back to the computer and show you how to upload the firmware. One other thing, when you do the firmware, you want this load position here down so it's on that. And when I did the first time, I had to disconnect and plug it back in. And that might be one thing to do if it's not connecting. I'm back on the computer here, and I'm at robertsonics.com slash wave trigger downloads, and I'll put a link in the description for you. Uh, you need two things here. One, I scrolled all the way down to this firmware update utility and downloaded that. And then the other thing is this .hex file. This is firmware version 1.34, and I downloaded that. And what I did is I brought this, uh, drug this to my desktop and opened it. I did the same thing for the .hex file. I grabbed this, dragged this to my desktop also. And now I just opened up the flasher utility. Uh, first thing is select the port. I believe, you know, if it's greater than three or four, it's going to default it to the one it is. But if you need to double check, you can go down to the search bar, type in device manager again, and you can double check. So here, if I go to ports, and yep, it is COM8, so that's correct. Next thing I'm going to do is browse for that wave trigger file and open up that. Uh, make sure the wave trigger is in the load position, and now you should be able to program this. Doesn't take too long to do, and this did work with just the solder bridge. I'm not having any external power supply, so either way is fine. However, in the end, you're going to need to solder bridge that pad so you can get power from the Arduino when it's in the machine. So maybe do it before or after, but sometimes it, it does need to get done. Once that's done, I hit quit. And now we need to go and grab the sound files. Uh, what I did is I went back to that ballysternos.github.iou. I went down to the third link here. And this is where we grabbed the Meteor 2021 folder. So I'm just going to copy and paste that address here. And here's the Meteor 2021 folder folder and at the very bottom is the audio samples for the wave trigger board so I'm going to go ahead click on that and I'm going to download again error saying it's too large do you still want to scan it I did once this was done I opened it up and all I did was copy all of these files and I just drug them right to my SD card folder so I won't do it here since I've already done it. It takes quite a bit of time to transfer, but just bring this, drag it to the micro SD folder. And when you're done, you can grab the micro SD, switch your wave trigger back to run. I unplugged it and replugged it back in here. And what I did just to check and make sure is I moved the, I got a headphone jack that I put in the wave trigger. And if you hit the, button you should get the very first sound so if I hit this you can hear the first sound is coming through so that tells me that the wave trigger is good and now I'm ready to install this all into the pinball machine I've loosely installed everything and just tested it and it was working fine but you can kind of see I got the jumpers on uh, two pins are showing, and then I just loosely connected the wave trigger here, and then the green cord is running out to a speaker here. And here it is, up and running finally. I just run into speakers loosely here. My fourth display is out, but this appears to be working. And go ahead, start a game. Here are the sounds in action. Space.
So everything looks good here. Um, big thanks to Dick Hamill for creating this and helping me with some questions I had. Fun project and an expensive way to kind of get a different play out of these Valley Stern games. So hope the video helped. If so, uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.